We're back with another episode of the Purple Squirrel Podcast. In today's episode, we're talking to Bullhorn Implementation Partner Tonic HQ about the growing pains of starting a small business as well as how they set their staff and customers up for success. You're listening to the Purple Squirrel Podcast, where you'll learn how to make the unattainable attainable through the insights of staffing technology experts. We're your hosts, Sarah Haberman and Hannah DeBool. Welcome, Becky and Dan. We're very excited to have you both. Thank you. Thank Good you. To be here. I'll do the wave. <laughs> so um, I figured we could kick things off um, by having you tell us a little bit more about your respective backgrounds in staffing at Pride Staff and um, how that sort of led to your aha moment that was and is Tonic HQ. Sure. Yeah. Go ahead, Becky. Okay. Um, all right. And in the, um, uh, with time being of the f- essence, so <laughs> we'll give you the short version for sure. So yeah, I started my career there in 1997, the end of 97. So a long, long time ago. And I was a true headhunter. Uh, lots of different titles were given back then, but did a lot of recruiting, um, managed the branch. And then Dan and I will kind of fast forward. Um, Dan and I met in 2005. And so um, he came in as CIO, which he'll share. And I was working in an operations role, but he really needed someone, uh, you know, to work with him. Um, and so because I knew the system at the time uh, that Pride Staff was on, um, I was a likely suspect to then work with him. And so that partnership kind of began and we chose Bullhorn and um, the history was really from there. So my last role there was I ran a department that was really a help desk department. Um, Lots of training, lots of um, consulting, um, lots of people calling in, um, doing everything from, hey, how do I do this in Bullhorn? Show me how to put in a job order, a placement, you know, a special PO, something like that. And then really a lot of um, frontline IT support too, like, hey, my printer's not working, things of that nature. So my background is really, really diverse. I think during that time I held eight different like official positions. Wow. But um, it was a great, great journey. But um, Dan will talk a little bit more about how then we kind of came together and culmination to then decide, let's start Tonic HQ more than a couple of years ago. So Dan, if you want to yeah, take sure. it from there. Of course. Yeah. So my background is technology. I've been uh, in the IT consulting space for a, a, geez, a long time now, 20 plus years. Um, and in 2005, like Becky said, I joined, um, I joined as the CIO um, and we were on a different platform at the time and we knew we needed to make a change. And so we went and found Bullhorn at the time. And in 2005, it was kind of everyone was still scared about SaaS based technology and um, someone else having your data. And um, we really felt like that was where we needed to go and and fell in love with the product and and the people and the culture at at Bullhorn. And so uh, implemented Bullhorn in 2005 and 2006 across a few different divisions um, all over the country. And we've been um, in and around that, uh, in and around Bullhorn ever since. And, um, you know, so when when Bullhorn decided to start the system integrator uh, program a few years ago, it just felt like, geez, this is the natural culmination of kind of our whole careers. You know, Mm -hmm. Becky with an operational base in staffing and and me with a technical leadership position um, in in the staffing industry and knowing Bullhorn so well, it felt like this is where we we should be like we can we can get to help people make their journey to bullhorn Mm -hmm. um, but also help people that already are on bullhorn and maybe you know need to look at how they use bullhorn and how to use bullhorn better um you know with with our with our background it was just like it was like a no-brainer and we just kind of looked at each other and said you know this is what we're what we're meant to do and Mm -hmm. um and so we've been doing that for uh, a couple of years now you said back in in, uh, 2005 when you were first moving over to bullhorn there was kind of a fear of using SaaS. Do you find that you still have to convince clients? I mean, I don't know if by the time they're working with Tonic, they're already convinced of the fact, but are you ever kind of convinced people, you know, this is the way that technology is going, this is what you should be doing? I don't think so. I mean, it literally was, you know, back then it was like, I want to be able to point to my data. You know, Mm -hmm. I want to be able to say that server has my data on it. And they felt like if they couldn't point at their server, then they felt, you know, scared. And, mm-hmm. and, and, um, and I think almost everyone that's coming, it's actually rare that we run into someone that still has their data in their office. You know, yeah. most people are, are coming from a, a competing platform that's also in the cloud. And so I mm-hmm. think we're, we're, you know, luckily we're beyond 
uh, kind of that fear that, that, you know, that you think you can do it better and more securely than someone whose whole business is, is mm-hmm. doing that. Do you find that there's any sort of pattern there in terms of size of business? Because I find often when I'm talking to our customers, those that do say, oh, yeah, we're actually we're working off of Excel sheets. They tend to be right. pretty small shops. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely. I think that, you know, and it kind of runs it, it kind of is, is interesting, like the medium sized companies are almost always on some kind of completely cloud based solution. Mm-hmm. Uh, the small companies are either on no solution or, um, you know, or could be in-house data or could be, yep. like you said, spreadsheets and things, or it could be a competing, you know, cloud-based solution. Mm-hmm. The larger companies, they're either on something that's cloud-based or they are on a, a self-hosted, you know, SQL-based system. Um, but I think that's one of the mm-hmm. things that, 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 that we love about doing what we do is getting to kind of see how people are doing it now and help translate it into how should it be done in Bullhorn and use kind of our experience on the platform to inform how that should work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's going to help that you've been through it yourselves. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And what are some of the more common fears, I guess, will, will you continue to use that word? Um, some of the new fears or like some of the the challenges or or goals that your customers are coming with you coming to you with today versus when you first started? Yeah. Um, Becky, you want to share something? Um, yes, 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 yes. So I think always, you know, by the time they get to us as a system integrator, you know, certainly they've worked and we work with tons of your sales uh, account execs, which are all great and we love those relationships. Mm-hmm. But by the time they get to us, you know, some have been on Bullhorn and some are just so frustrated with um, not necessarily Bullhorn, but if they're coming from another system, they might be frustrated with that system, right? So mm-hmm. it's like, oh, us, you know, assuring them and Bullhorn as well that, hey, this is gonna, <laughs> this is the platform you want to be on, you know, best of breed and all of that, of course, that we mm-hmm. believe in. We started our whole business working with Bullhorn uh, customers. So some of it is just kind of re-educating people where it's like, you can trust us. You know, we come with a deep, deep uh, level of resume, right, from 2005, yeah. specifically mm-hmm. with Bullhorn, and even before that in staffing um, for myself. But really, you know, they're concerned about, okay, is it going to have everything we need? You know, some of the integrations. Um, and so really, my side of the house, I really focus on the training and the education and just assuring them that we're they're paying us to have us help hold their hand, so to speak, and get them through that process. So that really helps, I think, to alleviate any fears that people have that really we are here for you. And it's really mm-hmm. that's what our job is to make you feel really comfortable and walk you through the whole process and our steps that we go through specific to an implementation or any customization, perhaps moving from S release to Novo or something like mm-hmm. that. So, Dan. Yeah, I mean, I think people, you know, are always scared about is, how are you going to get my data over? Um, everyone's business looks different. Um, even if they're coming from the same platform as someone else that we've done in the past, like their data still looks way different. Um, okay. And I think that they, you know, they think, that how, you know, is my data going to come over and are you going to get my data over properly? And are we going to be ready to go on, on day one? And um, I think, you know, we try to assure people that, you know, we have done it before, we can do it again. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the other thing we try to, we try to let people know, like, this is like a, it's a big deal to make a, a change from one platform to another. It's not a, a simple process and it's, right. it's uh, kind of messy behind the scenes. I often mm-hmm. refer to like a, a hip replacement, you know, like if you watch that, <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty wild I'm not gonna watch and, that. And, and pretty and hip scary. Re- hip replacements are increasingly common. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, you think, oh, I just They're go in and I come, out with a, I come out with a new hip, but it's like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of weird stuff that happens in between and, <laughs> oh, and yeah, it doesn't yeah. always go as, as planned. But in the end, you know, the goal is to is to make sure that people are up and running and trained and, and, and have a fully configured bullhorn that works well for their business. So do you yeah. find you're doing a lot of expectation setting throughout the process of, you know, it's not going to be a completely smooth process. That's just the nature of how this goes. Yeah, absolutely. I think that I think, you know, we try to partner with Bullhorn salespeople to make sure that they're having those conversations along the way that right. that they don't downplay those those um, those fears or expectations, but that we address them. And then when, mm-hmm. when we start to get involved with them, um, you know, we want them, we want we want people to feel like they know like that they're going to be well supported, that we that we can that we are going to do it well for them. But at the same time, that we are going to run into some stuff that gets funky, and we need to, and we will have to deal with it at that point. It's not; it's definitely not a hands-off process um, for anyone involved in the in the implementation. 
Gotcha. What what are some of from a platform perspective, um, and even from a user perspective, what are some of the things about Bullhorn that have have kept Bullhorn as sort of the I, I the guess center, yeah, yeah, of your business, right. and I guess some of the things that have maybe made it easier to to stick with. Yeah, sure, Becky, go go ahead. Can we start with you, Dan, just again, it's sure. a little light on my end of exactly what the question was. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I think that um, I think that um, the, I always say that the best thing that Bullhorn ever did was to build a, a the most open platform that I've ever seen and the most mm -hmm. robust API that I've ever seen and decide make a conscious decision that like we're not going to be all things to all people. Um, the staffing industry is so varied that what one business needs is so different than what another business needs. And so, you know, when we're when we're talking to people about their implementation or or existing Bullhorn customers, I think the thing that we can always go back to is its extensibility. And can we go, you know, can we plug in a partner that's doing something super cool really well? Um, and 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 also the customization, the ability to customize Bullhorn. To configure Bullhorn, what what we're able to do, especially with Novo, um, to really tailor a person's experience and a company's experience on Bullhorn, I think is is probably the 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 best strength that Bullhorn has going for it, and I think the thing that has made Bullhorn continue to to thrive. Yeah, I I love to hear that. Um, and I, I know you mentioned other partners. Do you? Do you often bring partners into your consultations in your your business? Absolutely. I think that you know one of the things that we try to do is stay up with who's out there in the marketplace, who's coming into the marketplace. Um, we try to get connections with those with those vendors, even mm -hmm. get demo accounts with those vendors, so that we can get hands on um, with them. And we watch very closely how implement how integrations go with those vendors, so that. Um, we can have kind of, you know, these arrows in our quiver that when a, mm -hmm. when a client has a, a need for something, um, we can, we can recommend someone and we know that they're going to do what they say that, that they'll do. Um, mm -hmm. the thing that we do caution people against is yeah, I use the shopping cart analogy a lot with new customers where it's like it's super cool with Bullhorn to be able to put these cool solutions in, but you're walking down the aisle with your shopping cart. Let's not put too much in at once. Because right. you're going to overwhelm yourself, you're going to overwhelm us, you're going to overwhelm the vendors, and you're going to overwhelm your users. So really for Go Live, we're looking at what are the key things that we need to do, um, and then let's work on a roadmap for the cool stuff that you want to do want to do down the road or with, with existing Bullhorn customers, then it's yeah. a great time to do that. That's yeah. sort of like the don't go grocery shopping when you're hungry analogy. Yeah. Well, it fits right into that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and if I could just add to that, <laughs> Hannah, sure. that, and really it's just piggypacking, but yeah, during our scope process, we're like, okay, list out the, you know, the integrations that you use. Do you want to keep those? Are you looking for something different? So really, you know, the whole partnership piece of wanting to know, yeah, like Dan said, that we can offer up, oh yeah, we've worked with, you know, this company, this company, et cetera, a lot, and um, make sure that those are the best of what they need. And I was just going to add, too, that it really is rare in this day and age that anyone that someone doesn't have a client, at least one that they're working with and that they want to continue working with or an add on. Yeah. So right. it's very, very common, again, with the whole Bullhorn ecosystem, which is great. So That's, the yeah. more the merrier, you know, as far as bringing business in for for everyone. For yeah. sure. So switching gears a little bit, you two have worked together since 2005, which is a very long time. Yeah. Um, what would you say are your respective strengths and weaknesses that have made you such a great team? It's a good question. Um, I think um, it, I think Becky and I talk about it a lot in terms of like a Venn diagram and, and like all, we have like we have very little overlap with like what we're both really good at and where our strengths are. And so I think that that kind of expands the size of the overall coverage. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, someone like Becky, who is you know, very operational, very training focused, but also just like naturally like seeks out relationships with people and builds relationships with people mm -hmm. and, and connects really well with people that have good energy and attract and helps us attract those, those clients that have good energy. Um, but she also thinks about, you know, kind of the impact of things, not just, you know, well, if we're going to do that, then who's affected by it? Who do we need to tell about it? What, you know, that's also going to affect this other thing that we did six months ago. And, and so the attention to detail um, complements 
uh, my maybe lack of attention to detail. <laughs> so I think that I think it's very you know complementary from from that perspective. I, I'm sure Becky would um, would agree with that. My, yes. my lack of attention to detail. <laughs> but it's, it's so good not to true. be aware. It's just where the skill set lies <laughs> because uh-huh. he's bringing in literally millions of bits of data that uh-huh. magically, I say it's always magic, wind up where they need to be. So, <laughs> yeah, the details are just different in the things we think about. So, as for Dan, um, we do a fair amount of engagements where we're brought in with a current Bullhorn customer um, mm-hmm. and just, you know, some challenges and their Bullhorn doesn't look the same as it did maybe two years ago. Maybe mm-hmm. they're wanting to move to Novo, et cetera. Um, or add some very key items. And so he's really good at that super big picture, you know, like, Mm -hmm. okay, that vision and really coming up with innovative solutions and we'll go on site or sometimes just do the calls um, and do really a fact finding of, right, you know, what are your challenges and what are you hoping to, you know, gain? Or maybe they don't even know other than we just need more buy-in and education, et cetera, with Bullhorn. So Mm -hmm. very, very innovative and just like I swear he pulls it. Uh, he just is so, so knowledgeable. And I, I just love that about Dan. Um, also, I would add that um, not um, he has very little fear as far as uh, if, with what we can take on or tackle. But he's still very realistic of our capabilities, you know, and doesn't overstep things. But I love that about him, too. I'm a bit mm-hmm. more cautious and though I may be like louder and, you know, the energy up more, but I'm mm-hmm. much more cautious with how I go about things so that again really complements one another for yeah sure. and i think that's yeah i think that's exactly like I, I know that like what the the kind of personality that i need in my life and in my business is you know someone that helps me like look at things realistically and you know and i think you know likewise for for becky the kind of personality that she needs in her business is the kind of person that says like we can you know like this, here's this crazy idea um, and then together, I think we can achieve, you know, uh, you know, the, uh, much more than we would individually, which is why I think, you know, both of when we were thinking about Tonic HQ, it's like, this is why this partnership makes sense. Right. I, I, yeah, I was going to ask you if you knew before. That's exactly yeah. what I was going to say. Or was it just some, yeah. like serendipitous yeah. happenstance yeah. that because I mean, clearly your your business experience fits together very well. But then on top of that, it sounds like your your particular personality traits also meld together nicely. Yeah. Almost, almost always, yeah. <laughs> right, right. That's, yeah. It can't be all no, the time. It'd be too. Another weird. question would right. have been, what are some like? Obviously, you get into disagreements, like any coworkers do. But yeah. um, uh, I think also some of our like smaller, some smaller staffing agencies or customers or prospects who might be listening um, to the podcast might want to hear about some of the challenges that you experienced just generally starting mm-hmm. your own business. Um, maybe notably within staffing, like staffing specific challenges. Yeah, Could you sure. share some of those um, and what you learned from them? Sure. Thank you. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, I'll get to the staffing piece, but as far as just in general, um, the way we chose to start Tonic HQ was Dan and I, here we go, <laughs> right? So here's a laptop, here's a phone. All right. <laughs> we you know, knew a fair amount of folks that had worked at Bullhorn, although People are being promoted and, you know, occasionally um, moving the ebb and flow Mm -hmm. of the business. And so, you know, just really making our connections from day one. But it was like, all right, you start and brand new and okay, let's find the business. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, getting the word out, building momentum, all of that, you know, our first deal within that first, uh, you know, month or two and then just really ramping from there. So, you know, some of that, I think from, you know, smaller customers or even large businesses, but just when you're starting, that can be overwhelming. And, you know, just a moment or two ago, Dan talking about like our personalities and how different we are, Um, but really just, you know, day in, day out, you make the calls, you talk to people, (laughs) you know, and just um, baby steps, if you will. Mm -hmm. As far as um, staffing specifically, Um, I think that, too, because we are a smaller company, we can really relate to a lot of, you know, folks out there and just like, yeah, Dan will mention more of it as well. But where, you know, you have to move your focus from one thing to the next. And so we can really relate to people who are, you know, that whatever user count they have within Bullhorn, because we've shared a lot of the same experiences with them, Mm -hmm. you know, and anyone who's started their own business. So, Dan, if you want to add on to that. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, from you know starting a business from that perspective, this is the second business that I've started, but it's the first business that I've started with a partner. And I think that, you know, um, 
it amplifies like the the stress of running a business is so different than working in a business however stressful that business is um it amplifies kind of all of your personality traits and you know the good things and the bad things and so you know it's 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 you know i think it's always much harder on a person and on a relationship than than you you think it might be mm-hmm. um and so that's always something I, I you know i talk to people about when we talk about starting new businesses but I think the hardest thing, you know, starting a business or running a small business is um, just you have to wear every hat. And, you know, and so you feel like, gosh, if I could just focus on this aspect that I'm really good at, that would be the best thing for for me and for the business. But because you also have to stop and take time to, you know, create the invoices and send out the invoices and deposit the checks and 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 hire people and 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 do all the other aspects of the admin Mm -hmm. stuff of your business because you're not in an established business with all the right people in all the right places. Um, I think that that's, that that's a big challenge. But I think that, you know, from a staffing perspective, you know, I think that the challenge is always um, the, the moving target of what do we have to do to stay legally compliant in staffing, um, yep. especially in certain states um, where, where it seems like we're always, even just knowing about everything that you need to do to stay compliant is, is hard enough, let alone actually doing those things and how do we do that in in bullhorn now and how do we do this in a way that doesn't bury bury our people so that's 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 kind of the the challenge i think from the staffing perspective is and big or small but i I think especially for a smaller staffing company that's trying to do all things at the same time trying to just keep up with even how do we even do this you know they can think recruiters they like to think of themselves as like we put people to work but it's like all of the little stuff with the onboarding and the legal stuff and everything else that has to get done. How do we help automate those things so that you can get mm-hmm. back to doing what you want to do or need to do? A, a lot of what you just said reminds me of, I'm going to plug just one more analogy here, but <laughs> reminds me of how new parents talk about parenting. <laughs> sure. Like for the first time, it's similar to like starting a small business in that it amplifies Yep. your best and worst traits. And sure. you think you're going to be able to focus on like what Usually you the think worst. is your best trait. Right. And like parenting in that way, but then you forget about all the little things like changing diapers and mm-hmm. like all of those little sort of like annoying things that distract right. you. And from, all of a sudden, the patience that you always yeah. prided it's yourself like on is out the window. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. I find what you're saying about wearing so many hats. I have that conversation a lot with clients yeah. where they're a small business, they are the founding CEO, they are the recruiter, they're also the person that's cleaning out the fridge on Fridays. Right. Like they're yeah. also, as you said, like researching how to stay compliant and just staying on top of industry trends and all this. And that's just another hat that they have to wear on top mm-hmm. of everything else right. and I, I don't know how they're doing that and growing their business and hiring new people so it's definitely a challenge that is probably fairly consistent across any industry where you're starting and you're small sure. but in staffing it's got to be spot on yeah staffing i think it's extra hard just because mm-hmm. it, you know the the product is I people right and so you right. know it's like you don't if we sold tires we don't worry about the tires just don't show up for work one day you know like where, right. whereas in staffing you know, your client, you have so many clients coming from everywhere. Your clients are your clients, but your, your, you know, your temporary employees are your clients and your employees are your clients. Like everyone is, is, is a client and you're dealing with people yep. and people are, are difficult inherently. People are yeah. Difficult. yeah, they are. They really, really are. <laughs> do you want to do the quiz? Sure. Oh, so no. it's, it, don't worry, it's not a scary one. It's a, <laughs> it's a nice quiz. And, and if you lose, nothing happens. So. Yeah. Um, it's basically, it's a little game that we play. We shouldn't even call it a quiz. It's a game, um, at the end of all of our episodes where we just ask a couple questions and we see if you can get it right. And your score is out of three. And if you get a zero, there's absolutely no repercussions whatsoever. (laughs) Are you ready? Just our credibility. Okay. Just your credibility. (laughs) Which can, yeah. Yeah. I'll do the first one. You can do the second one. Okay. Okay. Your first question is the area where staffing professionals could use the most additional training is... Where? That's Becky's you wheelhouse. Can, do you want to give them the app? Should we give them the app? And can you repeat it, Dan, to me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you can hear it? I'm no. sorry. Yeah. Do you want me to read it louder? If you could. Sure. The area of something. The area where staffing professionals could use the most additional training is blank. On their ATS. <laughs> I mean, not, well, not wrong. But should we have given them options? Yeah, we'll give you two options. Okay. Yeah, give okay. them the two options. Yeah. 
Oh, I see that there's two. Yeah. I thought that was one yeah. long answer. Yeah. Oopsies. Okay. Your options are building relationships with clients or incorporating technology. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes to both. To varying yeah. degrees. Yes, I think C, all of the above. <laughs> not again, not incorrect, but the correct it's answer also, is. Uh, it's also, is it a, I think it was a survey stat, so it could, those could be the top two. Yeah. But so this is just the top, be the top two. Top we top, would go yeah. with technology. It you is. are correct. You got it. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Third try. You, you can do the second one. Okay. So what, question number two. What do staffing professionals say is their single biggest priority? Is it engaging with candidates or sourcing candidates? Mm. Priority. Go ahead. Right. Biggest. And this is just number one. Again, both important, but I would say mm. actually engaging with them. Sourcing. Uh, <gasps> Hey, you're one for one out of two. (laughs) No, that's all right. I, I, yeah, I think both. Again, I think both are super important, and I think absolutely. Yeah, we see people struggle with sourcing more, but I would, I think that people see their jobs more as trying to engage. Yeah, and I, I think it, I think it is shifting though. I think people want to engage before they're saying, "Oh, this is a candidate that I've sourced." Right? I don't know. And I thought it might be trick questions because of all the great marketplace partners that we work with and that you work with of the whole engagement and who can help you with that. Well, and they're they're also meant to be tricky because if one just wasn't a priority at all, you guys would immediately know. So they have to be the the biggest priority and like the second or third highest priority. (laughs) So they're tricky. They're meant to be tricky. All right. I'll do the third one. Make us feel better, Sarah. (laughs) That's what I do. Okay. Number three. Are more staffing professionals worried about low unemployment rates or a recession? Hmm. Dan? Uh, I'm going to go with recession. It's actually low unemployment rates. Wow. Because it, right. it makes it very difficult to find good candidates. Hmm. Sure. But the really bad news about this stat is that about a third of these staffing professionals predict a recession. They're just not that worried about it. But I mean, is that really their expertise? <laughs> That's true. Know. They're not economists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and again, they're probably uh, still worried, just less worried. Yeah. That's okay. right. Yeah. It's all relative. Thanks for playing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was horrible. We did. We did if it so makes well. you feel better. We, we we had another episode the other day where the person went oh for three. Oh wow. So yeah. you guys are you're one step ahead. <laughs> all right. And and like I said, there's no repercussions from this whatsoever. Yeah. Zero. Right. All right. yep. <laughs> and uh, Hannah, neither Hannah nor I knew the answers to these before researching them. So you're yeah, not alone. You're super smart when you're reading the answers. <laughs> Don't exactly. we? We do. It's yeah. the Alex Trebek effect. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone is exactly. the Alex smart. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Thank you both for playing and for your amazing insight. You have a great story. We, everyone at Bullhorn loves the tonic story. So, yeah. Yeah. Great. And well, thanks for just... joining us on the podcast. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Thanks for having us. And we're, yeah. we're just we're happy to be you know involved in a business that gets to support and encourage and cheerlead um, Bullhorn just like we have since the very Love beginning. That. So appreciate Absolutely. having us. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the podcast, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and make sure to check out Tonic HQ on the Bullhorn Marketplace at www.bullhorn.com slash marketplace.